So hi and welcome everyone uh, again. My name is Matt. I'm uh, calling from Stockholm. We're doing right now a series of webinars. This is the fourth or the fifth that we do. And uh, we welcome you here into that room and we want to talk again. We said that already about the armoring within a relationship. Um, this other two people to my left and to my right, I don't know if that looks the same for you, are Susanna, <laughs> Susanna Beatrice and Dian Matoka. And I would like to give it first to this way, Sana, uh, to introduce yourself for people who don't know you. All right. Thank you, Matt. So happy to have the microphone today. I don't need to shout. <laughs> 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 so hi hello everyone my name is Susanna Beatrice and I am formerly Sana Sanita some of you might know me as Sana Sanita and some of you I know I recognize your faces <clears throat> uh, I am the co-founder of the Armoring Arts among many other things uh, lifelong seeker uh, passionate about human potential I uh, always strive to grow and develop, and um, what else? The armoring for me is a an art of life, so there is no limitation. Armor for me is everything that is in the way of me and living fully to my capacity, which is never ending. <laughs> <laughs> so the deeper I go in myself, the more I realize the bigger I can go or the more I can expand. So uh, I stopped there. I'm just a geek of human potential and I'm so happy to be here with you today. Matt or uh, Diane? Um, yeah, thank um, you. Um, yeah, I'll go. Thank you so, so much for, for, for Diane. Mm. Those of you that don't know me, I'm Diane. Uh, I'm also co-founder uh, of the Armoring Arts with Sana. And I've been doing this stuff for a while, so I don't really know what else to say. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm super welcome, super happy to, to answer them. But right now, let's get this uh, show on the road and start talking about why we're actually here. But actually, the reason, Matt and I had this conversation and we were coming from, I'm just gonna start a little bit. We had these different points of view, if you like, about the armory within a relationship. And then we talked to Sana and she came up with the link. So let's just create an intellectual kind of triangle that we're going to start depicting here. So from one perspective, it's an absolute nightmare to be a therapist to a partner because they can fuck your relationship super fast. So that's like one, one polarity, if you like, of it also works, but it's a dodgy ground. You need to know what you're doing. You need to be trained, really well trained. Both the one who gives needs to be trained in giving and the one who receives needs to be trained in receiving and not projecting. So that's like that polarity. On the other side, you have um, the armoring within a relationship as a foreplay to, to lovemaking. So that's completely like, okay, let's call it safe and fun and, and super opening and, and super amazing very few no-nos, very, it's not easy to go wrong with that one. It's pretty much thumbs up, yes, yes, yes. And then there is also the stuff in between, like how do you know how much you can press into the hmm, pain body and how much you need to stop at the pleasure point. So this is kind of the triangle of the points of interest, if you like, that we have for this conversation. So I'm going to hand it over to you two guys and start opening a little bit deeper and painting the picture. Yeah, uh, thank you. And I would like to say a few words as well. Um, so for people who know me, I'm the consent geek of the trio, uh, a triad here. And, um, you know, I've, I've, I've been in the armoring and this work uh, professionally since 2010, but into Tantra and sexual sexuality almost 25 years. I just went uh, into the world of consent in 2014. And uh, I have done, I don't know, probably something around thousand more or less sessions with individuals, uh, genital de-armoring, body de-armoring, emotional de-armoring, so all this kind of stuff. And I have been um, doing a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one situation with my partner over these years and uh, try to um, apply everything that I was knowing as a professional body worker and as a kind of therapist to my partner and when I went deeper into the consent work and the agreement field I just figured out that 
I had an agenda that I just wanted to heal my partner to a certain degree, do something that she hasn't asked for. And then I recognized that she was kind of thinking that I did that for myself, even though I was thinking it's good for her. So we had complete two different interests. And in my experience, when it came to more proximity and lovemaking and in intimacy, um, it created exactly the opposite. Instead of getting really closer and deeper in, um, I just recognized that uh, instead of being with her and um, um, letting us dive deeper into each other, it just created more separation. So I completely on one point in my relationship, in my life, when I dive deeper into the um, consent work and how the nervous system works, I actually completely stopped absolutely radical being therapeutically was 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 my partner totally and um so this is my approach today and uh and i don't want to be my partner's therapist anymore i don't want to do any de-armoring anymore i would send my partner rather to a professional and say sorry i don't want to do that because the power differentiation is something i don't want to deal with in relationships so i want to have an equal dynamic even though there are different approaches they are possible uh, so i just want to put this controversial on the table because the two here next to me they have as well different experiences and that's opening up the realm sana yeah i mean when i hear you talk it kind of opens a box which opens a box that opens a box that opens another box because <laughs> all all uh, i mean all couples and all relationships are kind of different and yeah, uh, I think you touch on a very valuable point when it comes to being kind of saving somebody, healing somebody when it comes to an agenda, which I think can probably be helpful in limited times of a relationship, but not all the time because it creates a power dynamic and it, it doesn't, it never gonna support two individuals to grow kind of equally, I think. But I think there is a beauty of having that, you know, working on each other's bodies and especially when it comes to foreplay or just keeping the body smooth and open without aiming to kind of be therapeutic, like working on each other on a, on a psychologically, psychologically therapeutic level or with trauma. So if we use it kind of in a foreplay to soften up the body, to, to just work to yeah, open the body more, I think that is super helpful and actually can bring a couple into closer intimacy and connection because we get more used to be held in, in sweetness, in softness, and we help each other to, to deepen that connection. Yeah, and I, I would like I, to... I, I, I'm boiling. I'm, I'm go, like, go, go. bubbles Yay! are coming out of my mouth. <laughs> can I, wait, before you start, Dian, one thing. For you who have not met us yet, we have, we are so different, the three of us, and we will all, almost always contradict each other. And that's a part of the game. And we love each other. We come from the same, I mean, most of the time we love each other, but <laughs> that's the charm here. We just are uh, wildly opposite sometimes. <laughs> Dan. Matt, are you bubbling or shall no, I go? No, 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 go for it. I can hold my horses. <laughs> yeah, but basically while Sana was sharing, I, I totally agree with everything you say, Sana. It's, it's, yeah, I'm on the same page, but I'm kind of looking at it from a slightly different angle when it comes to working with my partner because I can either put myself in a full-on trauma release, um, you're the baby, I'm basically the daddy, if you like. So that's, that's complete like... Mm, super stretch, super professional, very deep setting. However, and that one requires a lot of training from both, as I said before, for the uh, receiver and also for the practitioner. Nothing wrong with it, but it needs to be within limit. But actually what works very well is when you have two consenting adults who don't project shit on each other. It doesn't have to be drama. It's just, if I'm being the armor, I just lie down I need someone to hold space of love, which hopefully if you love your partner, you can do it with your eyes closed. And you just say, just relax and just go there. I put my finger where it hurts and just breathe into it. Just go there. And then I go there and there is no projection. There is no drama. I transform the stuff within my own body. And if I cry, I cry. If I scream, I scream, but not projecting it. My, and also not expecting my therapist to save me. They can be just like a friend, like a body, like a, 
signposts they were pointing to my body where I need to breathe into what I need to feel. And so if I see it like that, there is no really risk of going into this power dynamic and, and is, can, is this being clear or am I not really? No, I totally get it. But again, it's different, just different individuals, yeah, different yeah. relationships. Yeah, this is what I mean. So like maturity, so it's not one different angles to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, but maybe then you can be my daddy one day. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, what, what I would like, what, <laughs> what I would like to say to that is, um, from, specifically from a perspective of being a consent nerd, and and sometimes when I look back in my life, I think I was a little bit toxic with consent and a little bit rigid, like a co consent robot. You have to ask before everything <laughs> falls, otherwise, just it's it's you know it's in relationship it can be a total nightmare. You know when you ask every five seconds, just like if something is allowed or not, it's just like it's a killer for. For, for, for juiciness and somehow if you avoid asking for things and you don't have a really field of agreement and it can do exactly the opposite you know it's just like just not asking for it or asking for it can open it totally but what I want to say is because I know the dynamics so in detail specifically when it comes to the training that we do when it comes as well to you know um demonstrations that we do so when we work on somebody else we have to know that when you work on somebody that we we work with the person and the person we're working with of course it's for them but it's not really for them because the person who we're working with is actually giving us the opportunity to show something for others yeah so we need to explain that in detail that this is transparent and then when the person after the demo picking a partner and then working with somebody else that they know don't do to this person what we just have demoed be in proximity and communication about what the person wants and you might actually want to practice something and then you need to ask the person is it okay when I when I explore that here so when you know how the dynamics work it's it's one thing and when you have i don't know in a in our training 10 practice sessions or more then you might have kind of a good portfolio of experiences or you have done any other training and then you take your basket of experience home to your partner who has not done the training or another training and then you try to practice on your partner something that is not really fully clear and communicated so having done a training does not mean that the kind of agreement field and the skill set is really solid and good enough on all points that it has an opening it can have an amazing beautiful opening but as well it can be as well challenging yeah and this is this is what i want to throw in there so having done a training doesn't make somebody an expert that's what i want to say i'm just going to point put one little point in so basically what Matt is saying and i fully agree with it and that was my practice also it, yeah is to as I'm progressing on my path of training, my partner needs to be doing the same. Otherwise, we don't match. So if I'm learning the armoring, and then I come home and try to teach something that my partner has no idea about, that's gonna be probably going the wrong way. So it's really useful in order to create a dynamic in a household that I'm talking about, which is both consenting responsible adults, not child parent. Uh, dynamic they both need to have similar level of training or at least very similar interest and 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 path when it comes to working on the bodies it will be kind of similar to a little bit but not like imagine you go and do a tantra massage training or something and then you come home and you can offer a session that's nice but then if your partner tries to do it to you it's just not going to work because they don't know so this is kind of similar. And so in order for the dynamic to stay within balance and not to go into power dynamics over time, I mean, then both partners need to eventually catch up with the training and keep kind of at a similar, or at least have understanding, very clear understanding of what is happening, what is not happening, what is this for, what is this not for. So just like the basic concept of playing field needs to be defined because that stops a lot of uh, headaches. Mm. and problems and dramas mm. you have anything when, when I, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just kind of i'm looking I'm, I'm then i'm looking into the angle of 
um, like if we go take away the just the the trauma and etc and just go into the actual beauty of when a couple learn the armoring together and especially the the arousal or the sexual energy part of it and work on each other's body because that doesn't necessarily need to create this power dynamic it can just kind of help the body to release tension and blockages in order to support the life force energy to flow more yeah which I think is an amazingly beautiful path that every couple should (laughs) or can widely benefit from doing. Yeah, because we, yeah, I think that is incredible. This is really a way to to grow together, which is amazing to get to know each other bodies and get to know every corner and every cell of each other body and kind of help each other to open up to more aliveness and juiciness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then I would like to add one more piece as well from my perspective or from my experiences is, you know, as a as a professional and knowing how to opening up bodies and knowing how to be with somebody and then having a partner who knows what I can do with my hands and with my body. I was just ending up in every time when it came to physical proximity that I was the one who was doing the work. And I just came to this point, just like, I don't want to do the work anymore. I just want to make laugh. I just want to be in connection. I don't want to work, you know. And then, and 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 then, on one point, I just created an expectation that, you know, I've done so much work on you. Now I want to be worked as well on, you know, just like uh, just opening my body. My body wants to be open too. My body wants to be as well prepared. My body wants to be softened. And um, and I came to the point just like I don't want to do I don't want to do work when it comes to love making you know and if there's something we need to work through I'm totally happy but when it comes to relational proximity I don't want it to be work. Okay, I think it's time to opening up the room for some questions. Um, um, I want to answer one that just came in. If you just give me one second. Yeah, please. So Karen is saying uh, equal capacity, equal presence, equal knowledge, equal empathy and service. Woof, that's a tough order with an intimate partner. And I agree there, but that's not necessarily what I'm talking about. I guess what I'm talking about is both both partners, they need to have equal understanding of what is going on like they they need to be a grown-up so if i'm in a relationship with someone who is not when i say grown-up i mean emotionally mentally psychologically stable responsible non-projectile adult someone that you can have a deep conversation with and there won't be any kind of finger pointing judging blaming because with that kind of person this work you better don't do honestly because that that's a recipe for disaster but so all i'm talking about is someone they can hold themselves somebody that doesn't project so they need to know about that and then you can choose to give them a gift if you are trained let's say one is working in a bank but it's a conscious person and the other one is a the armory practitioner you're very welcome to op- offer your partner a session or two or ten but if they can understand that there is no this is not a professional setup and there is no finger pointing and projecting basically whatever happens within the body they need to own up and and deal with within themselves so that's really what i mean about uh, equality but it would be also nice to receive from your partner and that is a tall order that means that you need to actually have a relationship with someone who has a very similar interest in your life which if you don't then you're gonna have to go and pay for the sessions but your partner can still receive from you if they have this kind of adult attitude is this clear guys or yeah, I think it's clear. I just let in the, on the to follow up on that what you're saying. So I'm re- reading Sam, Sam's question here, and and kind of the essence is that, you know, working with clients, we have this big capacity, often unconditional, and then we get our friend or our partner, and then we know them so deep deeply, so we know their triggers or we we know their story differently, and this is. So I read here, like, how, how, can I, how can I navigate that landscape, uh, Sam says, to not get triggered with my partner. But this is exactly why it's often um, suggested not to work therapeutically on friends or partners, because we know them deeper. We know them in a different way that perhaps not always give a fair angle to the issue, for example, yeah, which can in one 
one way be super supportive, but in another hand, not because of that yeah, kind of uh, close entanglement. Yeah. So either you can play with it. I mean, if you really want to make a sport out of it, which I totally love, is to just bring in the the utter honesty and just like own like, okay, now I feel really triggered. I project that you blah 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 blah, or I I I, I feel that you are doing this, or so you put a container that the trigger is allowed into the space as well. Yeah. So you can make a dearming, a sport of dearming, like a verbal dearming through the session as well. If you really want to play, yeah, you just set the field of being brutally honest with each other. Uh, I, I, can I, I want to ask something. Uh, wait, yeah, uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> blah blah. <laughs> so no, Dion. So what I mean is that that it's uh, yes, it can be difficult to hold hold the trigger, but is it an is there a way to add alchemy? Can you turn the trigger into opening, into potential, into growth between you? This, yeah. And let me know if that makes sense, please. Thank you, Sam. Yeah. I just want to add a different angle to the same story. Is it is this this applies if you're going to talk therapy? And if you like through talk therapy, but if you're just doing physical dearmoring and, and your partner is lying down, the only time I'm going to get triggered is because there's no talking. They're just going through their stuff. I'm just putting a finger on and they're going through their stuff. And the only time I'm, I'm going to get triggered is if, let's say, within them, something is triggered that I haven't resolved within myself. Then internally, I start getting triggered not externally i mean well i get triggered and then i need to say hang on a second i got triggered i need to pull myself together face the other way breathe out breathe in relax recenter and when i'm clear i touch again so in that sense actually there shouldn't be any you but then basically you, you you can either hold it or you can't hold it and that's exactly the same in a professional setting this is the reason why when we train people we say to people to become a diamond practitioner you need to go through so many sessions yourself because you need to catalyze yourself time and time again time and time again so actually you can become a solid space holder the one that does not react to your clients expressions this is why becoming a diamond practitioner is not so easy it takes time because you need to work on yourself a lot yeah i mm. yeah go on. Yeah, I just want to say, so there are quite some people in the room, actually, and I think there is an energy towards something, but I cannot, I would like to hear, like many of you showed up for something, and can you please add on what resonates, what you would like to know to help us here, because I can feel there is not full, uh, <clears throat> it's missing something. Yeah, I would, I, I would, I would like to add one piece while you're writing in, whatever you feel writing in is the right for you. Um, Specifically, I mean, the theme is the armoring within relationships. So um, I'm single since half a year or so. And uh, so I'm not in relationship uh, with anybody and, 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 I'm, and I'm not really getting reflected with, with somebody. And I don't really enjoy that at the moment. It's just like, oh my God, that's, it's so relaxing. Yeah, it's so good. And I know as well, when I was in relationship, when, you know, certain behavior coming up from the other one or from me and then there is kind of this kind of well we just need in energetically emotionally in a form of um defensiveness and and protectiveness you know where there wasn't any closer possible we need to work through stuff we need to we, we need to work and we, we we need to take the defensiveness and everything out of the way and then there is this kind of there are political in a relationship that has to to um, find a resolution, you know, and 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 it makes relationship more under pressure, and then then this pressure we we have to work through stuff, um, or or as if there is a um, nearly pathological need of working through stuff, finding something, kind of just like oh, when I'm getting triggered, then you have to change a behavior. And I would like to opening up the room now, um, if anybody has a question um, or would like to share something verbally, that's our invitation here for the armoring. Um, speak into the room, ask us any questions, um, be courageous and brave or shy and insecure, but do it anyway. And uh, everything is welcome. 
there are no stupid or wrong or bad questions, please feel absolutely welcome to unmute yourself, raise your hand or um, ask straight. Who has something? You can ask individually or one of us or the three of us, and then we're having a fight over your answer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there must be some silver line, like it, um, why there was such a high interest in this topic. There must be like a, a red thread of some sort that I'm, I'm kind of, I want to mm, find it. Yeah, here's a question from uh, yeah. Veronique. I would like to know more about emotional dearmoring in a relationship and how to handle when you both get triggered by each other in distance growth, the flow stops. Um, if one puts the work on the other, but um, does not want to go into fears or um, attachment wounds themselves. Thank you, great question. Dear Nosana, you have anything on that? Uh, I was busy answering a question here. So how to handle distance for each other and distance and growth? Well, I guess uh, there are different ways of um, handling when both get triggered, um, depending on your setup, your level of maturity. I mean, one thing can be, I mean, first acknowledging like I am triggered, like own it. Okay, I am triggered. Can I, what do I do? Do I, oh, can I catch myself back off, uh, take a few deep breaths and just like, okay, is this constructive or not? Yeah. Uh, that doesn't always work, especially not in close relationships. <laughs> so what can be useful is the commitment, you know, to have a, a, a code word, you know, it can be a code word, like enough, like when you say blueberry or apple tree or pancake, or whatever, you, you just committed to stop. Yeah, because the, 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 the connection and the, the, the turning point or the meeting point is more important than the trigger. Yeah. And sometimes it might be that you just need to disconnect for some time, yeah, to so disconnect. And what can be really useful when we are in this kind of nagging thought pattern about what's wrong with the other is also to find what's beautiful with them and also find what's really true here. What is true in myself? What is it? What type of need? What do I need here? Yeah. Do I feel misunderstood? Do I feel not seen? Do I, what is it that really needs to be communicated? Yeah. So it's again, it's it's not one, uh, you know, it's not just not one form fits all, but it's like, okay, what works for you and what is the level of maturity that you have between the two of you? Does that help, Veronique? Please let me know. Matt yeah, or no. Dan? Um, no, please yeah, do. Go, for it. go, go. Okay. So, yeah, what I would like to say to that, specific to that part of the question of, of, of one, um, or one's getting triggered by each other's uh, um, distance grow so for example if one person is going to a training um or having you know a, a, a different life path and evolving in a different way and uh and sees things differently so you literally um have an emotional or spiritual path that you have a different perception of life and the other person is stuck where they are and they just want to do whatever they do and they don't want to change anything so that means if you are in a relationship with each other uh, and only one person is growing and the other person is not willing or not capable of following up, it just creates a dismatch. And then is the question, um, how much do you expect the other person to grow? Maybe the other person doesn't want to grow. And maybe you are triggered that the person is as they are and you just come to a point where you realize your relationship has had this, time span of growth and you see that there is no further development at this point and your journey is over or one person just doesn't want the other person to grow because they're feeling their relationship all of a sudden for example when it comes to monogamy we talked about that two webinars before so so one person said well i just want to be monogamous and the other person wants to be open and then just like the person who is monogamous is fear based in this in their approach and doesn't want to have the other person going into other relationships with other people. So I'm good where I am. And that means I don't want you to be somewhere else. So let's stay where we are. 
You know, it's just like the, the question is how can you find a solution by accepting where you are, where the other person is. Mm. And there's I just want to put, mm. and, yeah, and, I want to put my five cents into yeah, this. Please. Basically, uh, copy paste what Martin Sana said, and there is also an option of taking a mediator. And that's a very powerful and wise choice. If you find that you can't really communicate your point across, and there is a lot of backlash and a lot of kind of emotional triggering going on, it's totally cool to take a coach and, and have a three way conversation somebody that can actually mediate the truth in between you to actually find the common ground and to give each other space to express and to really listen, to really get what is going on with your partner. That could also be uh, something that you can do. Um, but really, mostly when I was listening to you, Matt, I was kind of agreeing with the fact that very often if one in a couple does the work on themselves and then the other one doesn't, if that carries on for a while, you're gonna have to split because it's, it's just not gonna go anywhere this this is also something that you know also the other question is answering to both of you like why are you together what is really binding you what is the binding element within a relationship is the relationship based on growth and furthering on your spiritual or whatever path is your relationship uh, bound to having family and raising kids is your relationship uh, based on security and providing each other material security and safety those, you know, those are hard questions that you really need to be honest with each other and with yourself and admit to yourself, this is where I'm at and this is what I need, this is what I want, because that really sets the tone to direction of the relationship and, and how you deal with issues that arise within a relationship. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's face it, every relationship has issues and that's the way it's designed. That's the, <laughs> like the biggest purpose, not the biggest, but one of the biggest purposes of relating. So it really is important to be in a relationship that has the same track, that has the same direction. Because if one of, one of the couple is within a relationship because they need financial security or emotional security, and the other one is there because they want to grow, this is not much made in heaven, that's much, much made in hell. So it's really wise then to say, thank you very much with love, I take off and I, I go on my own because this is not gonna work. So you also need to apply spiritual logic, if you like, and grown up thinking and be brutally honest with each other and accept why you're really together, what is binding you, and then see, put it on a scales and see what is really important to you. Mm -hmm. So there are nice questions in here. I'm just oh, starting to read, but there is um, the hand from Alex and yes. uh, Nicola. Would you like to unmute yourself and throw your question in the room? Hello, everybody. Nice to see you. Um, I was just thinking, I mean, Dianne, you just said that um, that if one person is doing the armoring seriously and the other one doesn't, they're probably going to split. And that's... Um, that's not what I said. Uh, yeah, one sentence of you was like that. I heard that. No, you didn't? No, not like that. But anyway, continue, continue the question. Yeah, it, it's, I'm not going to uh, build up and argue on that. So. No. No, but uh, my idea was also um, like, um, why not be a little more brave about that? Because um, I mean, we are here, we've done, we've done the armoring and we kind of float into it and take it serious. Otherwise we would not be here. And, um, and uh, of course, if something is important, you want to show that to your partner and want to involve and- and triggers happen in relationship. They do happen anyway. So if you're not reacting grown up, you're gonna notice it in love making, you're gonna notice it while you cook, while you raise the children. So it's not, you know, relationship is happening. And if you get more honest and more serious, it may lead to that you're not stick together. And and just to put all this weight on the armoring, I think this is for me, this is not the point. It's it, it might be a microscope where you can show where things are get shown a lot, but triggers are there anyway. So if you move around the triggers, that's not going to work for a lifetime, I guess. So I I feel like I feel like a little bit like what what Sandra said. Um, invite the triggers, and maybe something really um, cool can come out of that. Like what's what's really really difficult also because it's close relationship triggers but uh, maybe there's more growth in it than than being with a therapist that always you know holds space and you know so what 
I think like where are the chances? What's the what's the good thing? What's the yeah? What's what's the chance about it doing it as a couple? Yeah, I totally hear you. And like I know a little bit about your couple because uh, you came to our training and also Alex came to Body Sound and Breath and just finished. So you're like an example of a couple where you're both hardcore on the path. You're both committed. And so this is perfect, like dig into it, like mm. express challenges, dig into each other, reflect each other, obviously within consent and responsible and, and grown up. But basically you two are totally up for <laughs> having some deep issues resolved. So in this case, at least I don't know you that well, but from what I do know of you, you seem to be well matched uh, on that on that front. So, what what exactly is your question? I, I wasn't really sure. Is it was there a specific question? Or... No, I just I just wanted to say why why not be more brave about? Absolutely, be. I mean, both of you already are. So go for it. Go for it. You are full on contact. Yeah. Might have been a misunderstanding also in there. The, the thing is that there are many people in this room and you two are particularly a couple that I happen to know that are quite hardcore, both of you. So th the rules that apply to you will not apply to somebody else in this room. So we need to also take care of this, whatever, 47 people here. And uh, not everybody is at the same level of playing field. Um. I see your Thank hand, you. Patrick. Um, there is a hand raised, Otto, and there are two more questions in the chat. Oh, more questions in the chat. Um, Want to go into the order of Otto um, Hilding? Please unmute yourself and throw your question in. And then Patrick. Hi. Thank you so much. Um, I'll just walk out of here. There. I wrote my question, but when I realized that there was a chance for throwing my hand up, then I did just that. Perfect. Um, Perfect. Thank you so much for this initiative. It's really wonderful that you're putting all of these topics on the table. I'm a newbie, so of course I'm super appreciative of this. And um, my question is as follows. I, I've been a body worker for 17 years, and I have a very hard time blurring the lines between therapy and eroticism. I can... Is there a question in there? I mean, I can read your question. Yes. So, but if you yes. speak it out how, directly, how do I, yeah. of course, how do I begin to soften the lines? Because um, as a, my partner is amazing. He's awesome. And I really wish I, we've been together for 13 years. <laughs> and so that he has to choose between, well, do you want body work or is this a sexy thing? Like you can't have both. So then my question is, how do I begin to blur the lines without feeling like I'm, yeah, dissolving an identity that I hold so dear? Yeah. Do you, or maybe uh, that is the way. I don't know. I'm open to your yeah. expertise. Do you think that uh, sexual energy or erotism can be therapeutical? Absolutely. Yeah. It's just, it, it's ex the expression of it. Yeah. Which how is explicit. What? it is and how outright and consensual it is mm. so for example if anyone came to my practice and and it started to uh, turn towards sexual i would very instinctively know it and put an end to it but it's different with your partner yeah so i mean it's, it's be able to have both yeah yeah i hear you um so what are you willing to give up to give your partner what he deserves um 17 years of experience of doing it the another way like i'm i just i would love to know how to practically engage with yeah. come to sana the yeah. yeah, through pleasure in <laughs> yeah. three weeks basically that's your answer. Week. yeah, yeah. So you know have you ever so great. have you have you ever experienced a, 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 a like a sensual session or the armoring through pleasure session or a, a sexual oh. activation session? Have you ever had that direct experience yourself? Of course, I have never allowed myself to even consider it. Of course. It. So if you cannot allow yourself, how can you <laughs> hold space for anybody else to go there? Okay, so you it's definitely a me first situation yeah, i mean that can yes. you know that can that can help and then i also get it you know I'm, i also 
you know, I was trained as a massage therapist and blah, 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 like 22 years ago. <laughs> and we were told, like, if the man gets a hard on, you just take the towel and kind of throw it over the cock and you pretty, like keep on massaging like nothing ever happened. You know, this is, you know, it, it is because it's also important, you know, I hear that you are a... A, a, a woman with integrity and you want to give your sessions like therapeutically and this is what it is and it's very strict and it's very important yeah so hundred i i totally yeah, yeah. get that this is like deeply ingrained in your system yeah, yeah. so but i yes. want to step out of it like I, I hear you so yeah. so but what i hear there is also a a i don't you know there is a, a disownership like i can't hear that you own your own sexuality here because sure, if you sure. really deeply knew the valuable the value the the value of that work you would happily do that because it's so extremely utterly therapeutical like there are some you just like you have probably correct me if i'm wrong um blockages around your own sexuality yeah oh yeah absolutely yeah, absolutely. yeah. Uh, but it's just i don't think uh, like this is it's an inspirational thing i wouldn't probably would not explore this for myself if it wasn't out of a desire to be a more complete lover for my yeah yeah, yeah. So, so what is the benefit for your relationship you think what would it add on to your relationship if you started to deepen your own sexuality for yourself first and foremost not to perform not to just give not to do for somebody else just for you what do you think it would do to you if you just like into suppose... that I suppose that I could just that I would want to flow uh, freely instead yeah. of just having a category where this is this and then now this is my line and then yeah so I, I appreciate like the story yeah 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 it does <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the response I I also appreciate that there are many other people but um, yeah. I'm very very attracted to your work thank you very much for mm. for putting this out there and. Um, We'll come along. <laughs> yeah, you're so welcome. Welcome would, to reach out. I, yeah. I would like to add my five yes. cents to that. Yeah, yeah. sure. So I've, I've been a sexual body worker for many years. And um, I have been in many situations where um, sexual body work was desired. And then I was in many situations where sexual um, energy was not desired. And then it's my responsibility as the practitioner to draw this clear line. You know, importantly, yeah. it doesn't matter if there is sexual energy desired or not desired. It's not about my sexual energy when I provide that work. It's about the energy that the person wants to experience. And my job is to hold that container and create the frame that the person I'm working with has the experience that they choose to have within my limits. You know. And I was, ah. you know, this is, this is kind of the, 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 the frame building of the profession, literally. But when it comes to, to lovemaking with your partner, um, when you actually do a massage or your partner does a massage and you have the um, frame in your head that it needs to be a session and I only want that to be physically without sensual or without sexual, but then sexual energy comes in and your frame is all of a sudden triggered and confronted by, well, wait a second, this is actually like what I do for a living and all of a sudden everything is ending up in sexual energy and that doesn't resonate with my feeling, then you're literally in a conflict. Yes, I've been avoiding that for a long time. Yes, right. And, and, and Sana said that very clearly. So there might be some blockages around your sexual energy. But where I want to point that onto is, and we, we talked about that, Deanne and I, in the last webinar, and we talked about that as well in the webinar before, about sexual, sexuality or celibacy, for example. But mainly, this is part of my line of work for many years, is... When it comes to sensuality in a massage, many people see sensuality only as a foreplay to sexuality. And when sexuality mm -hmm. comes into the equation, sexuality has always the goal of the climax. And that yeah. brings a complete different question into the room. Um, 
can you have a sexual encounter? Can you have a sensual encounter or a sexual encounter that is not goal oriented? And what happens with your sexuality when your sexuality is not oriented towards the goal? Okay. Yeah. And that, that changes this question. The distinction. Very discerning. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well. Wow. All right. Thank you so much. Huge. Question. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. And there was the next one was Patrick. You had your hands up. Please unmute yourself. Well, so. Well, here's Patrick now. <laughs> all right. So, I, <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, right. very well. So, so I'm. My question is around, so living this, as a Dharmaring practitioner, you have this radical responsibility, radical honesty, radical responsibility. And this is about my own development. It's about this in, in, in life. I want to go that path. There's this. So if I'm in a committed relationship, it kind of has to be somebody with the same mindset or at least somebody mm. where so it's we share the same path somehow and that could be this is this is starting but that's really hard but if we do commit to this complete transparency and really want to grow both as individuals and as a couple i i it's, even if it's a kind of a if you kind of fail of a very of the armoring session we're clear on the goal this consent and everything i mean even if it fails and we talk about it, we can discern things and then really take a step back. But, well, it could also be growth. It could also be healing. So the, if, if you're really committed, if you're really in this, can there really be a problem? Or of course there can be, but yeah. Please, <laughs> what, what comes up? Sana, the end. Sorry, I'm busy answering yeah, the okay. typing. Well, okay. well yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, yeah, can okay. uh, uh, I mean, I get it. I, I want to have, if I'm in a committed relationship, if I, my, my, my drives, I can just speak for myself, you know, I cannot speak hundred percent for every, everybody else, you know, we will have different desires and intentions. And of course there can always be problems. And of course, I mean, we're humans, we see things from different points of view. We have different challenges and all of that. So, um, of course, it can. It will always be an issue somehow. There will always be disagreement to some degree, you know. <laughs> and maybe you grow so far, and then you cannot. You meet. You find out that you can't grow anymore together, you know. But you've shared that journey, and I. I just encourage that type of relating. It's not for the faint-hearted. It's not those who just want to, you know, be in relating because you know we just want to be in relating. But if we really, we really, 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 really want to grow, I think that's the path. This is where relationship is so beautiful we can't do that alone you know we can't face our deep <laughs> triggers alone we cannot heal relationship through distance like we cannot heal our attachment wounds through not relating you know this is relationship is so powerful and if you find somebody to grow with in that it's just amazing will it be can i you say can it ever be a problem i don't know i think there will be problems <laughs> but what is the problem what is the what is the, how do you meet that problem? What do you make a problem? What do you see as a problem? You know? I, I, I guess the problem then could be that, I mean, you're, you're authentic and you're really yourself, but then you realize that, well, well there's, we, we go in different directions and then we, well, split and that's with, with uh, all the love that we could ever have. And then that's, that's, it, then that's not the, problem if you want no to. why would it be a problem i right. mean sometimes we journey with somebody and we journey with them for a certain amount of time and then it's time to not journey together and how can you then do it i, I don't know if i understand you right now but i'm just talking into the what i thought i heard i mean even that like how can we let go of each other with love and care it's like we have a we go through the relationship what do i regret what do i resent you for what am i appreciating appreciative of somebody has the microphone on Right now. So, what's going on here? With can somebody mute Dion? Can you help me? Oh, yeah, I can't see who it is. I think you have to go into participants and mute all. So, Dion and Matt, you have to unmute yourself. So, uh, where I, yeah, the, no, but if we, if we see it, that, that you're right. If I tune into that, then there is no, never really, really a problem. It depends on what do we 
what is a problem for you or the partner, you know, because if you grow together and then you decide to move on, you can also be just be grateful and then it's not a problem. Mm. You see, it's all like when I tune into that, that's like when I tap into the source of life itself, it's like a never expansion, it's just expansion. It's just what we, the thought forms, the beliefs, the labels we put on the situations. That's all that is. (laughs) But if we allow that to constant move and flow and look at it for what it is, then there is no problem, you know? But that's deep. Yeah. Yeah, is that an answer, no answer? It's, it's, a, it's a good answer. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I have a spell and no answer. <laughs> answer. <laughs> Would you like to hear it, Patrick? Yes. Okay. Um, as we have done that in the training or said that in the training, you know, there is no book about the armoring and sessions. And the armoring session is based on the value as your individual carry in your life. Yeah. And then, of course, you have a partner, you have a certain, or your partner has a certain set of value, and then the value of you and your partner, they have to kind of match up somehow. And important is, and that's my experience in my life with my partner and in my session work, is transparency and authenticity, you know. So that means that my partner knows what is my set of value, the way how I conduct a session. And this this value have to be absolutely radical, impeccable. You know, my my partner knows no matter what. Just like in my sessions, there's no intercourse exchange of bodily fluids ever. I have declared that, yeah. And 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 you have to declare that yourself. And but to be honest and authentic, you know, when I'm in a session, sometimes and and there was somebody coming, uh, smoking hot, and want to have a sexual juice up session and just want to feel it all and you know want me to teach them how to edge and how to activate that part and you know i'm not a robot and of course i feel and and, and of course i pick up what's going on and i'm not shutting myself down i'm not cutting myself out but i take this responsibility that i'm that i'm doing that for them and i have the responsibility to then tell my partner afterwards oh my god there is this part in me that hates my own value and i would love not to have this value i would love not to be in this kind of container but this is where your integrity is measurable Mm. okay where your values on the table comes to truth and can you communicate that Mm. that's that's the question how do you communicate that and the way how Mm. you set up this frame of your session you know this is absolutely up to you and like dn sun and i said that in the training you know we have our code of conduct and our values and you have to have that in your life and you have to align them with your partner does it no mm-hmm. answer answer something it it, it does thank you okay. no the, the 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 setup the container Mm. Uh, and every well, that every every time you actually commit to that, then yeah, that that sounds like an extremely important discussion to have in advance. Yeah, as early as possible. Yeah. Like, yeah. Thank before. you very much. Yeah. I'll be back in a moment. I'm just going to the toilet. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, any other question? <sighs> any other concerns? Right. Any other comments? Anything? Uh, there's there's others in the uh, in the chat. If you feel like we can read them, and then, but my brain is functionally different when I'm reading. I can't really get that fully out as if I hear that. If you're capable of unmuting yourself and asking the question into the realm, we can totally different engage with you as if we're reading it. And you're more than welcome to unmute yourself and ask the question from your. I can I can bring up. I didn't follow yeah. the full thread here between Mans and uh, Dian. And Mans, I sorry if I don't pronounce your name right. Let me know if it's disturbing. <laughs> um, so what I saw is that somebody's friend's man wants her to have sessions, like yoni sessions, because there is pain, and obviously she is avoiding. Oh, she has trauma in her yoni and he wants to fly somebody in. I mean, this can be a very delicate topic in in, in the relationship well, uh, as well, like where uh, 
you know, where, what is the underlying need for her? Like, what does she really need? Here's, it sounds like a bit of imbalance in the relating. And it sounds a bit like he has a desire, which he's kind of slightly forcing onto her, which won't open her up. Yeah. So sometimes we need to be very aware about when we want somebody to do something or become something for us. And we force that upon them is it's kind of going to have the opposite reaction. Yeah. If it's not the pleaser who doesn't know the boundaries, but that will backlash down the line for sure. Yeah. So that is a de really delicate topic. Where do we in a relationship want somebody to do something for us or become something for us? And what, uh, to what length are we going in order to force that upon somebody else? Am I clear? ish i think it's a really delicate topic as yeah, so when i read this i read that uh, he wants to fly in like a taoist master but perhaps there is somebody else if she has trauma in her yoni maybe there is somebody else where she can feel more safe with maybe she can pick a practitioner that she feels safe with you know if she even wants that when i read that energetically i don't know it's true i don't know the relationship i'm sure there's much more to it it sounds to me that there is more like an avoidance pattern going on and there is not the communication of of being clear in her own needs and desires yeah let me know if that makes sense well, i haven't fully gotten the question um i think dian spent a lot of time on it also so we, i think it's uh if, oh, if she oh, if right, the friend right. needs help yeah um i mean I would like to put that theme on the table anyway, specifically mm -hmm. when it comes to the armoring and some of you might have uh, experience like that, specifically when it comes to lovemaking. So genitals um, between yoni and cock or penis and vagina, how you want to call it. Um, there can be pain points, you know, and this pain points internally. And I had just a conversation about that was was a friend the other day it's just like specifically when when men um you know working all day having the stress they have you know um just like being shut down and contracted and uh and and need to be functional and having a lot of responsibility and then maybe they're having a partner uh just like with children at home and then they're having kind of sexual encounter and the only thing what they do is um uh, having before they go to bed you know the five six minute um intercourse to release the pressure and the stress they have in their body and um and the question is then where is that stress going if he is orgasming and ejaculating his stress to release in her body you know so so this is this is one part of the conversation or women have been somehow penetrated hard or unconsciously and have done or or, or have have let have happened a lot of uh, friction pressure based intercourse and allowed that to happen to make the partner happy you know because he was um conditioned and educated by porn this is how sexuality is and and then there are different you know through the contraction through the muscle contraction in the in in in, in the yoni that can be can be the spots created they are painful yeah <laughs> and then you just like have another relationship with somebody else and then the spots they're getting triggered you know and 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 and, and you start feeling them and and this is my experience with many couples I've been working with that that the the men don't know what to do with this pain and 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 feels responsible for the pain that he caused. And the woman doesn't really know how to deal with that. And then the question is if he probably, for example, would come to the armoring training and knows, you know, we do that in the training, taking the tension and the pressure out of the point in the uni and then he goes home but she hasn't has hadn't had the experience and then he is touching this point um why she does not have the experience it can trigger a lot of stuff yeah so 
both can come to a de-armoring training or both can have a de-armoring session with a practitioner together. Yeah. Um, it might be the way that it can be a practitioner, a female practitioner who shows the man how to touch this spot in the yoni. It mm. might be that this woman chooses in the first place instead of having a Tao master be flown in from XYZ, having an, an, another woman that she trusts from, a, from another female having the session first, you know, yeah. just like, uh, you know, there's so many different um, uh, points to this equation to take in con consideration so that it's, it's, it's really good to know to put all the details on the table before it comes to a decision and then um, choosing in which direction a session could go. So this would be my 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 contribution to this. Anything that Dean or Sonno or anybody else? In there? I've written already bags of stuff in the chat. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, it, it um, makes another topic really about you know the delicacy and boundaries and you know, but I feel it's another it's another webinar actually. Yeah, we can definitely. Which I actually that. wrote yeah, about. You remember, I I wrote you in one in the in the chat before mm. this. I'd like to pick up a uh, question from Karen. Uh, Karen, can you just maybe make yourself uh, unmute yourself or at least show yourself so we can talk? So the question is, have any of you have a committed relationship where both choose to the path of celibacy within a relationship? And then how is that, the, has that supported or harmed your inner work? Well, that's a very super tough choice. I, I mean, basically, I haven't got that experience. I'm celibate now for about seven years. But uh, within a relationship, I think first question I would ask is why do you want to do that? What's the actual reason you're going celibate? And so for that, Matt and I covered that in detail and depth of the last uh, two webinars, which are actually online. Feel free to go and uh, spend time listening to them. We're not going to repeat it because it's like an hour and a half of a great conversation. But my like, first question is why do you do it? Is it because uh, of raising your sexual energy or is it to heal and correct your emotional uh, and relating issues. So that's kind of, Karen, if you want to have a little conversation, I'm open to it, but I need to- Yeah, kind of... sure. Yeah, thank you. I'm here, so, can you hear me? Yes, I can, yeah. So what is your re reason for, for this question? Well, this is just a general question. I'm not actually in a relationship right now. Um, I've been walking the path of celibacy for over two and a half years now. And for me, that and by the way, I, I have watched your other, um, <laughs> I was part of those webinars or watched them after, <coughs> excuse me. Um, for me, it was really about creating a boundary, a boundary safe container for me to go extra deep with my own healing work. And my question about the relationship was because I have been in relationship with people who are, you know, very conscious, intentional humans walking this divine path, um, very high level, high ability people. And yet I noticed there, and, and Matt kind of spoke into this a little bit in the beginning when, when people have so many tools and have so much knowledge and so much wisdom, it can sometimes create like an over, overly structured environment where you're asking, you're checking in every two seconds and you're asking for consent for every little thing. And, and so um, I kind of liked the, I never even allowed myself to think about uh, stepping into celibacy within a closed relationship. I, I didn't even really thought that that could exist until it just came to my mind in this conversation. But um, I guess my intention would be to allow both parties to have enough space to kind of sort through and dismantle kind of some of the deeper combustive <clears throat> you know, the combustion that happens when people are walking this path so um, authentically and raw and coming into such, you know, profound relationship with hard stuff and dark shit and all the things. Um, 
yeah, so I just posed it to to all of you to see if that has if you've witnessed that existing and um it, in my intention I was thinking it wouldn't be a long term because I think you posed the question well why be in relationship and I totally honor that 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 makes sense to ask that question but I was thinking more in a short term sense you know maybe when two people are trying to overcome something or sort something out um yeah. I don't have a, more of a direct question, but if you want to speak into any pieces of that, please feel free. I can I can, I can. just uh, double in it, but I'm not going to be yeah. too long because it's a theoretical question. But basically, uh, from my personal experience, uh, I needed much, much more than a few weeks, few months, or even a few years to deal with what I'm actually dealing with uh, within celibacy. I mean, so to be with someone for a short period of time being celibate it wouldn't actually give me enough time and autonomy emotional energetic and dynamic autonomy to just be with myself so i can actually dig deeper into it and the other thing is at least the things that i'm dealing with which are kind of relational emotional kind of issues to do with relating it's really not possible to even begin dealing with it if i'm even living with someone else because there is immediately there is like relating there is by default there is someone else's energy and i'm kind of drawn into it whether i like it or not so um if i was really basically I, 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 my head is going left and right like i don't see why if i want to go seriously into uh, uh, celibacy for the reasons that i'm talking about then i would need to be on my own i couldn't possibly do it even yeah i just couldn't do it thank, thank you for saying that because it helps clarify why i'm really asking I would consider myself to be living almost like a monastic path, like a very internal devotional path with God or source or mm. whatever. And um, I've been in short term connections where I have met someone who is also doing that. And so we've entered into this like co-devotional kind of celibate practice while, you know, still there is still Eros and there's still that in the room but it might not cross a certain boundary or get to a certain level you're asking so, for trouble basically <laughs> like i mean i hear you but for me it's like my life is precious and i only have x amount of years on it so i really want to be super efficient with my time so if i'm this is me i'm just kind of sharing my point of view so if i'm share if i'm choosing to be celibate for the reasons that i talked about then i'm gonna give it a hundred percent kind of chance so no relating because that really maximizes my chances of success um I, I i don't know i basically like because it's theoretical let's maybe even kind of stop this conversation because it's I, not for me i want to say a few as well, things about it yeah <laughs> <laughs> i guess i mean it's again it's it's individual individual path uh, intention desire outcome and there's so many things at play um they can be really beautiful i believe and i suggest you also i mean now i heard you had the the kind of experience ish but um i mean i don't know somehow it also feels to me that there is a longing for connection in you is that true in the very deep deepest level is that correct and then i'm just um, well i mean yeah i i think that's a core in as just in people participating in humanity <laughs> um well, let's not generalize here no, let's be specific we don't know there is a specific f frequency i'm picking up on i don't know if there is is loneliness or or hurt or i'm picking it too there is a there is like why is it you choosing you know um uh celibacy in the first place you know i hear there's a devotion you want to heal some things and so on but what is yeah, the at this real point, deep desire at this point i it it feels within my boundary and within my spiritual devotional practices to desire to meet someone on that level yeah and so um, it doesn't, I guess the longing, I don't actively feel, I don't, I don't know what you're picking up on, but mm -hmm. the longing is the same longing that I feel for union with source. Yeah, yeah, it's not other than that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, of course, that's kind of the core, core wound in all of us. <laughs> yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah, I hear you. The different levels. So there is there's two more things then that uh, that pops up. I mean, one, uh, 
you know, there's a beauty of relating and not engage sexually. I mean, you can both engage in raising sexual energy, but not having intercourse. That's it's like, it's really, really actually, you know, it, it, it can bond on another level when we take away the urge to have intercourse, and which often goes so fast, you know, we often want to make such an importance of having sex, which is wonderful, I don't make it wrong, but there is a beauty of not, of taking that out of the equation, yeah? Absolutely. And then of course, yeah, and then there is, there is of course, the, the beauty of going into devotional practices together, amazing to grow with somebody in that, yeah? And then there is a, another thing I pick up on. I mean, there is no, I'm just kind of test talking here. I don't have a, a direct answer because it's your life and your experience. And I just urge you to explore for yourself. But when I hear you say that people are in the high level and have to always ask for consent of everything, for me, that is a really boring relationship. I would go mental if my partner would yes. constantly go and ask <laughs> for permission about everything. I would hit them. Not really, but you know, that is functional, it's mental, it's like what I feel like I consent scene is fantastic, but they missed the, the living thread of life, like life where we just are being human, we're intuitive, we feel into each other, we want each other well. Like I would say maybe you need to up level your partners. <laughs> maybe you just need to meet somebody who's meeting you deeper, yeah. I don't know. I'm just saying it. Yeah, I'm. I'm now forgetting the context of which we. I was talking to uh, Dean about that, yeah. but um, yeah, we're. I'm kind of out of that space. So yeah. honoring, honoring that and yeah. moving on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would like to. I would like to add something here. <laughs> I mean, we we had that at the end said that already. We had the webinar about celibacy and um, and sexual mastery uh, a, a few days back or weeks back, you know. And my thing is, um, my thing is edging. You know, I just say that very clearly. I have mastered that path of um, uh, the 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 kind of non reproductive sexual encounter that is goalless. I just love that, and. The question is, when it comes to this approach of, um, you know, you desire the, the 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 union with source, is literally that's my experience that I want to go there with my partner and I, I want to enter that space into unity and 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 I just don't want to merging into oneness. And 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 when you have, you know, there is this this saying: if you have gotten this this divine kiss once, you are ruined forever. And when you when you have touched this realm, just like, why the heck would I go back? You know, if I would just like sexually engage mm -hmm. with a, with a, with somebody in my life who has just like, okay, let's let's go for a stress relief and and quick the 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 the, the, the sleeping pill rub. I'm just not interested. Why would I? So, but then the the question comes. You know, on one point, if you meet another person, and of course everybody has their own values and their own set of um um engagement like we said that before with Patrick when it comes to working in that field but independent if you're not working in that field you have to have your own set of value and then you, you need to create this dynamic that is kind of functional the frame the container and as we is call this this webinar today uh, the armoring within relationship or within a relationship my question would be in the first place what is relationship or what is a relationship anyway you know yes there, there, there are this this ideology about telepathic agreements and con, uh, 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 ideology about relationship what is a relationship i have no fucking clue what relationship is and and, and i don't want to have this this assumption based field of telepathic agreements you know and and you know specifically as this consent geek that i am and i totally agree to that what sana said just like if you have this relationship thing in base of consent where you ask your partner every five seconds is it okay if i kiss you is it fair okay if i touch you is it, is it, it's just like it's complete it's it's it's, it's a dead dead end completely utterly where consent becomes toxic you know and nobody wants to have that in their life it's a complete killer but the question is how can you create an agreement field that is providing that frame that you can call relationship? You know, I have for myself Individual, answered that question. Yeah. You know, I've I, I I designed and developed this this a course, the four pillars of relating. And if I'm jumping with somebody else in this container, I want to make clear that they have this value in place. 
And if they don't, it's just like, sorry, I'm not available. Why would I? Hmm. Great. I think we're going to wrap up, start to wrap up. I'm just saying, oh, it's six minutes left. Yes. I love that. I love that uh, we'll wrap up. Matt, because this Can is I just, uh, all about before, before our own we, values and wait, wait, before our we wrap up. in 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 uh, in relating. Yeah. Before we wrap up, I just want to very very quickly uh, answer Courtney's uh, concern. The last question: uh, returning to intimacy after period of celibacy. So uh, please find out and let me know. I'm all ears. Um, I'm kind of harboring similar level of. Um, anticipation, I have to say, I don't know when I'm going to be ready for it in how many years, but I get you, I totally get you. So go slow, find someone that you really like that understands you and that has a soft heart and uh, be transparent and honest about where you're at and what's going on with you. Mm. That's kind of my five cents. Okay, so to wrap it up, yeah. that's that was my job when I just uh, remember that, right? Yeah. Um, so I've prepared two links. So I just want to make sure that um, everybody's getting some value out of that. So, of course, we have a training coming up. That's the dearmoring training. Uh, the basic training in um, beginning of April is a 10-day training for professionals, not only for professionals, for everybody who wants to know what dearmoring is and how to go deeper into that hands-on um, personal guidance. So there's a link. Please check it out. There is as well, um, Sana. Can you say that we have we have a, we have a special a sp special gift for the, for the singer? Yeah. So us. we, you know, first I'm gonna tempt you. So we have this beautiful. We have the training in in uh, in April, and it's in an amazing place. It's in a mansion, so it's like high. It's luxury, literally. It's uh, double rooms, single rooms. There are no dorms, and there are like horse. I don't know what to say. Hest and Senya. So it's just high quality. Uh, beds we have outdoor bathtubs and you know it's just it's, it's a mansion it's proper from uh, 1700 century it's just beautiful so we decided if anybody here want to jump on we said we're going to give you a single room so if you decide to join and sign up within 48 hours you get a single room worth of 330 euros Yay. <laughs> so, so you find that you find that in that link that i'm that i'm posting now yeah and there's i just link. posted it I've just posted the link. Oh, you did. Okay. Are you so, <laughs> Good oh, well, so, so we did it too. Um, so, and then there is another option. If you just have more questions, if you just want to know more about the dearmoring training, if you want to know more about that, what we do and who we are, we or are. you have some questions about your own life, about the armoring, how you can put it in. I offer for everybody a 30 minute free discovery call. If you just want to get your uh, questions answered, please feel free to reach out. This is not Only. a sales call. I'm not getting yeah. you into anything. So it's like, please feel free to, to yeah. join. Then, Sana, there is your the uh, armoring through pleasure coming up. Let's let's start from the chronological. Next week, oh, Tuesday. Yeah. Wait, yes. wait. Next week, Tuesday, we're actually doing similar kind of structure like this. Is going to be on Zoom, but we are doing a process in circle. So it's going to be a test. Uh, uh, as if we do in a training, all three of us are actually going to lead it. It's going to be very similar to what we do in a training. So for those of you that want to find out um, how things work when it comes to talk therapy and processing within a circle, come and join us. It's free. It's going to be blasted on Facebook everywhere, basically seven o'clock on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm it's going to be everywhere. We will find yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Come and have some fun. Uh, yeah, that's we're gonna try that. We have like a signature in our training, which is kind of it's hard to to express it, but there is some really profound collective healing works that's being done in that field, and we're gonna see if we can transmit part of, parts of it online. So we're doing like the first test on Tuesday. So there's a an opportunity for you to come if you wanna have, you know, you have a life issue or something you wanna learn or grow into, like. We see if we can support you into your next next level of expansion, basically. And then the week after, uh, I'm hosting a the Armoring Through Pleasure workshop in Spain, in Barcelona, and that is for people who have experience with body work and are is only mature people. So you've done work with yourself. You don't necessarily need to have done the armoring, but I want um, you need to be a body worker. So I have two slots left. If you're interested in that, please reach out to me. 
yeah? And jamming through pleasure is really a focus on opening the body into pleasure, basically. It's very juicy and amazing. All right. So please write a few sentences, a few words in the chat. Just like, what's your main takeaway? What are you taking with you? What has resonated? What was not your uh, ally? So that we have yeah. something that we can actually deal you with. You missed something. Um, yeah, anything that you missed, because we just love providing that spaces and you're more than welcome to join the next one and invite some friends. And uh, so this processing circle, like Sana said, is just one of our signature. And this is absolutely transformative. People who are here, who have been in the training can probably confirm that. So please feel free next Tuesday, come again, bring some friends and you're more than welcome and it's free. And of course, we just talk about our training. Yeah. But we don't push that onto you, but yeah. you're more than welcome to join. Yeah. And also one, one last thing and then we, we're going to stop. The, please come with topics, you know, like you're is such a big, uh, huh? I was just going to say to oh, yeah. because there, yeah. the arming such, you know, it's, it's some people, and I know I'm repeating myself for you who heard me before, but the arming is so much more than body work. Like it's, like I said, in the beginning, it's a lifestyle and all three of us are kind of geeks in, in growth, personal development, spirituality, human potential. So we just love to provide. So if you have a, like a topic in life, <laughs> you want to know more about or sexuality or relationship or the armoring or come up with something so we can kind of provide that because yeah we do enjoy these spaces and do appreciate you being here yeah mm -hmm. with us yes we can give it to somebody <laughs> all right your words are more than welcome in the chat please drop them in <sighs> All right. And if you want to go, feel free. It's 8.30. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing yourself. Thank you for asking questions. And thank you for being here. Really, 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 really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah from my side as well. Thank you so much for joining. And without you, we wouldn't do it. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and see you hopefully next Tuesday or yeah. some other time. All right. Some of you are right. seeing the pain soon. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Much love. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.